everyone, welcome to our Monday live stream. It is a rainy Monday today here in Southern California and we are set up outside in spite of the rain. We've got all kinds of umbrellas over us. It actually just lightened up just a little bit, so hopefully we'll make it through the live stream without getting too terribly soaked. And camera guy is actually sitting right in front of me. I'm going to turn the camera around just a second. He's out here um, on support here, so he's going to say hello. Hey everybody. And he is actually um, in the chat as well. And for those of you that are brand new to our channel, welcome. Camera guy is my husband, Jerry. He films and edits our videos. And uh, now that he's home from work, he's able to be on, on a lot of the live streams as well. So very thankful to have um, him as my teammate and working together as a team to bring you guys some great garden content and have a lot of fun on these Monday live streams. And another little note is that everything Sunflowers and More is usually our moderator and she's taking a little break here for the next few weeks or so at least. And we have Cliff Warren, which a lot of you know and love. He's a longtime um, participant here on our Monday live streams. He's going to be our moderator uh, for the time being and say hello to Cliff show him some love follow him over on Instagram he lives in Idaho on a pretty large piece of property and loves to grow giant vegetables he's an expert gardener and always has some really interesting um, photos on his um, Instagram and in fact today he told me after the live stream guys he's gonna be starting seeds for some giant pumpkins so you definitely don't don't want to miss out on seeing those photos um, as, as his pumpkins grow so thank you so much for joining us thank welcome to all the newcomers a lot of people are brand new to gardening obviously trying to grow our own vegetables in these trying times in our world so that we can minimize our trips to the grocery store. So I wanted to do my favorite top three tips for people who are brand new vegetable gardeners. That's what we're gonna be talking about today. And for those of you that are experienced vegetable gardeners, I wanna hear from you. I want you to be here to encourage and support the newbies and throw your tips and tricks into the chat as well. And I also wanna give a huge shout out to all those homeschooling parents who are brand new homeschooling parents. And a couple of them have mentioned that they're doing a little gardening section with their kids, helping them get started growing and they're watching with their children today on the live stream. So thank you for joining us and please, have your kids get their questions ready because I really want to answer um, the kids' questions about being brand new gardeners and what they would uh, like to grow and offer some tips for them. So let me just say hello to everybody here in the chat um, and see who's here today. Patsella is here. She's, she joins us every single week. Um, Santa Ana Road Wild Man. Hopefully you have the day off today. You're not driving around in the rain up there in Central California. He's saying yes to minimize trips to the grocery store. Nisha is asking for Cliff's Instagram name. So Cliff, you could pop that there in the chat. That'd be great. Uh, Jack. Hi, Jack. How are you? He's watching from Maryland and he says he just mulched with shredded leaves. Smells amazing. Jack, I'm right there with you. I love the smell of shredded leaves, especially when it rains like it is today. They just smell so good out in the garden and really help um, keep your plants um, insulated from the heat or from the cold and cut down on the weeding. Garden Girl is here from Michigan. Hello, Garden Girl. Pretty Alice Moon. Giant pumpkins would be so cool. Diane Grenier from Michigan. Oscar from Texas. Uh, Nicole Marie, hello Nicole. California Garden TV here from Southern California as well. And congratulations to Brian at California Garden. He just reached 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. We're so proud of him. We've done several videos with him. He has some great content, guys. Go over and check out his channel. He's doing Tomato Tuesdays, so, uh, Sustainability Sundays, and I believe Free For All Friday. So he's really putting out some great garden content to help Go you guys. Brian grow organic vegetables yes go go brian um if you're having problems with your picture or with your sound please go ahead and refresh and hopefully it should be um right back so um let's jump into the um the first tip and then i want to hear all the tips from you experienced gardeners out there but my first tip for starting a garden if you're not for starting garden but yeah your first tip if you're a brand new vegetable gardener and I know I say this a lot guys but start simple expand later that's my garden motto even if you're brand new and trying to grow an emergency garden or a, a you know a huge vegetable garden just start simple I would I would really recommend starting simple in a couple raised beds 
or a couple little containers. Get those planted, get some experience under your belt, um, get some skills, get some confidence. And then once you taste your first fresh harvest, you're gonna be hooked and you're gonna wanna grow that much more. But don't plant too much all at once and get yourself overwhelmed. A lot of us are super enthusiastic when we first start, but then we realize that we may ha have bitten off a little bit more than we can chew and get overwhelmed and uh, maybe that causes some people to stop gardening. So I would just recommend start small, get something planted, even if it's a little container of lettuce on your kitchen windowsill, a little um, pot of herbs indoors. Um, if you guys watched our garden tour video, we actually showed this area right behind me, which I like to call my little kitchen garden. It has some of the Smart Pots containers and just enough for us to step outside and pick some herbs, pick some lettuce. Um, I've got some peas right behind me here, which I just harvested a little basket of those um, a couple of days ago. So um, start small, keep it close to your house. And then as you get more harvest, you can move out um, in your whatever space you have and um, plant a little bit more each time um, that you plant. So first tip, my favorite tip for new gardeners is start simple and then expand later. And I do go into more detail in this in my new book, Organic Gardening for Everyone. Um, and one, one way that you can really um, keep things simple um, actually, that's my next point, so I'm going to wait to get to my next point um, for just a moment. But um, let me just check here on my list. Oh, yeah, what I was going to say is um, if you're not sure about how to grow in containers, because I am getting a lot of questions about growing in containers, um, go over and check out the Small Space Garden series that we have on our YouTube channel. It shows us planting in containers from start to finish. There's a lot of ideas in there on what types of vegetables you can fit in containers. Um, and how to get a container garden set up, how to fill up a container with soil, how to install drip irrigation, and ways that you can really maximize your space by growing vertically. So you wanna look under the Small Space Garden series on our YouTube channel. It'll pull up that whole entire playlist. There's about 12 videos on that playlist, including how to compost in a five gallon container. So that'll give you a lot of great resources to pull from. Now, I did wanna to mention too that um, lately I'm getting a ton of emails um, with very specific questions about what plant can I grow and what in which size container. And I'm really sorry, you guys, because I'm getting inundated with me emails. I'm just not able to respond to each one like I would like to. So what I would recommend is doing your own research. Um, go on my YouTube channel, of course, and do a search for the vegetable that you'd like to grow or the like container gardening or that type of thing. And you'll have a plethora of information on there, all kinds of videos, and also do research on Google. Um, I'm just not able to respond to all the emails, so please um, understand that and know that I'm not ignoring you, but if I, if, if I just don't have the time right now to do that with everything that's coming in. So do your own research. I wanna empower you guys too to experiment. Don't be afraid to try different things. There's lots of things that work in lots of different ways and you might find out that you really enjoy gardening in a certain way um, that you hadn't anticipated. So do your own experimenting and don't be afraid to make mistakes, to kill plants, and have a lot of fun along the way. So I just wanna let you guys know that, empower you to get out there and just dig in. It's the best way to learn, is just learn by doing. Even if you make mistakes, you're still growing veggies and it's still a great learning experience. So I wanna hear in the chat here what some of your tips are for brand new vegetable gardens, gardeners, um, besides starting simple, expanding later, and then I'll get into my second tip in just a moment. So I'm actually gonna pull my camera a little bit closer to me so I can see the questions better. And if you could please um, write a question in all caps in front of your question, that way I can see it better as the chat is just flying by today. We ha have over 200 people watching. So I'm really excited that there's so many people out there interested in growing their own veggies. Okay, let's see here, question. Um, let me scroll back here. Oh, here's a great question from Fluffy Little Clouds. Hi, Fluffy Little Clouds, welcome to the live stream today. Is it okay to plant vintage mixed flowers among tomatoes or peppers? I can't find any info 
on it. Now, I've never planted that particular type of flower. I'm assuming it's probably a wildflower type of mix, but absolutely, I plant flowers and mix in uh, flowers into my vegetables all the time. It's a great way to bring in the pollinators and um, also just to provide some beautiful color splashes throughout your garden. You can see this beautiful flower right, me, right behind me here is actually a, um, I believe it's a bok choy. Yes, it's a bok choy plant that has flowered and gone to seed. And the flowers are edible, the pollinators come in like crazy, but absolutely plant flowers amidst your vegetables um, to bring in the pollinators and give yourself a nice pop of color. So here is a question from Muhammad Amil. Can you plant cool weather crops before your last frost date? Great question, Mohammed. I'm actually gonna hold off on that for just a moment because that is actually included in my second tip. So hang on to your question, and if I don't answer it my next tip, um, pop it in there. Okay, uh, let's see here. A couple other questions. What is the best way to grow vanilla bean seeds? From Ace Elliott. Um, I have never grown vanilla bean. Um, we actually did a video last summer when we were in Maui, um, the viewer, I don't know if she's on here today, um, Debbie, her husband actually grows vanilla beans or vanilla uh, plants from seeds. And I know it takes quite a bit of effort. So um, Debbie, if you're here in the chat, maybe you could pop a little tips, a few tips and tricks in there, but go back and watch that video on, I'm sorry, garden tour in Maui. You probably find it on our garden tour playlist and you can see his absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous um, vanilla bean plants with a lot of vanilla beans too. Okay, Ari has a question. I live in zone 8B. Do you have any tips on growing tomatillo? A tomo tomatillo is a warm weather vegetable, so it's gonna grow really well for you in the warm weather. You could start the seeds indoors, probably about a month or so before your last frost date, and then plant them outdoors. Once the weather warms up, your frost is passed. They actually grow like weeds. And I fa in fact, I think in a lot of areas, they almost are considered weeds. Um, you wanna grow them on a trellis. They're a long um, vining plant, but they're absolutely delicious for um, uh, salsa verde and uh, all the green, wonderful salsas. Okay, let's see here, Irene Moffitt. How are you, Irene? It's great to see you on here today. Can I plant patty pan squash in a fabric pot? Absolutely, you can plant anything in a fabric pot. And if you're not familiar with fabric pots, this is one right behind me here, it's called a Smart Pots. And um, I actually carry these on my website, Cali Kim Garden and Home. But if you want a larger size, you can head over to um, smartpots.com and uh, pick some up there. You can use, I have a code you can use, Cali Kim for a 10% discount. Um, but yeah, you can plant anything in fabric pots that you would normally plant in the ground or in a plastic container. In fact, I would highly recommend using fabric pots over plastic because the roots don't get root bound. Um, you know, you guys know if you plant it in a five gallon bucket, how the roots kind of wind around. It doesn't happen in these. So the vegetables um, can grow a lot larger and still take up um, nutrients and water like they wouldn't be able to do in a plastic container. So absolutely anything you can plant in a fabric pot. That's one question I've had a lot of lately is, what can I plant in this size container? So um, again, head over and watch the Small Space Garden series. Also head over to Smart Pots website. They have a lot of good information. Um, they have a soil calculator over there where you can calculate how much soil you need for what size container and lots of different sizes. They have um, long raised beds, 15, 20, 25 gallon containers. Um, just about any size Smart Pots you wanna grow in, they have over there as, as well as a lot of different colors. So it's a super easy way to um, get your garden started. All you have to do is pop up the container, either make your own soil or grab some soil at a garden center plant your seeds in it and you are good to go. Okay, so let me get into my second tip and then we'll come back in the chat. Thanks for all your questions and this is just so much fun to see all of you out there with the chat flying by and uh, really a great garden community of people just helping each other out, growing our own food and having a lot of fun. So my second tip, if you're a brand new vegetable garden, gardener is plant the right veggies in the right season and i have a lot more information on this in my book organic gardening for everyone but that's one way that you can really ensure that you're going to have a lot of success growing vegetables so in case you're brand new to gardening there's two different types of vegetables vegetables that grow well in the warm weather 
and vegetables that grow well in the cool weather. So cool weather vegetables are things like broccoli, cauliflower, um, a lot of your greens are cool weather vegetables like lettuce, kale, and chard, and then uh, peas. Um, this, this container right behind me has some arugula planted, which is, you can tell how pretty and green it is, but it, it loves the, um, the cool weather and cool weather vegetables do best when the temperatures are 75 degrees or below. Mm -hmm. So those are vegetables that you can plant early in the spring. A lot of them even take a frost, like peas are very frost tolerant, lettuce is very frost tolerant. So a lot of times, even if you're not past your last frost date of the year, you can go ahead and um, as soon as you can work the soil a little bit, um, you can get out there, plant some peas, and then as soon as the weather warms up, they're gonna start sprouting and you get a big jump on your, um, on your growing season. So get those planted early in the spring. And you can see a lot more information. Um, we did a video a few weeks ago on three veggies that are easy to plant from seed when you can't get to the grocery store. So go over and watch that video and I show some demos on um, how you can get peas and arugula planted in a container. And I showed how to plant arugula that pretty much applies to any type of green. You can plant it in a similar way and get those going. Now on the other hand, warm weather vegetables are vegetables that like temperatures, say 60 degrees on up to about 85 degrees. Those are vegetables like tomatoes, cucumbers, squash, and peppers. And those you want to plant outside after your last frost date because a lot of them will be damaged by frost or die when it frosts. So um, those are vegetables you can start from seed indoors and you can go watch our spring garden series for all about how to get seeds started indoors, including simple grow lights, very easy ways to get them started. And then you'll plant them outside after your last frost date so they're not killed off by frost. So good tip for brand new gardeners is to make sure that you plant the right kind of vegetables in the right kind of weather. So tons of videos on our YouTube channel to help you with this, the spring garden series. Um, so just basically scroll through our playlists and especially um, pick out the spring garden series to help you know exactly how to get your seeds started indoors and then how to plant your cool weather vegetables outside. But of course, all of this is in my book, Organic Gardening for Everyone in detail. It's a great primer on how to take, um, how to plant your garden step by step, including starting from seed all the way to getting them planted out in the garden, harvesting and challenges along the way that you might encounter. So if you haven't grabbed that, it's a really good resource um, to help you with your vegetable garden. And I know for those of you that are homeschooling also, that, that would be a great resource for you to go through with your kids. And then we're doing videos to go along with um, each chapter. So let me head in back into the chat here and see what questions there are, especially I want questions from those of you that are watching with your kids. Just let me know your, your children's name so that I can call them out and thank them for growing veggies and answer their questions for you. Okay, here's a great question from Carmen. How do you control rodents from stealing your almost ready produce? Okay, Carmen, that happens to us so much, especially in the summertime. Right when I'm ready to pick a tomato, I'm waiting one more day and then the next day a rat or something, some other kind of rodent has gotten it. So that's so frustrating. I know exactly how you feel. Um, one thing I've done that really helps is, I, I know you can't do this to all your tomatoes, but I, I have covered up my tomatoes with um, like an old t-shirt or a towel um, and kind of clipped it or used a, like one of those twist ties or even a, like a, uh, not a paper clip, a um, clothespin and kind of wrapped it over the tomato and that really does help keep the rodents away. Um, you can also use takeout containers and kind of snap those up around your plants. Uh, it's so frustrating, but that's one thing I found that really does help. But yes, California Garden TV, they do know exactly when it ripens and like to pick it when it's nice and juicy and ripe. I guess just like we do, right? <laughs> so yeah, let me know if, how that works for you. Okay, let's see. Jared, do you see any questions? from oh here's lauren glover homeschooling mom from hampton virginia wonderful that's awesome let us know um if your kids have any questions okay so jerry if you see any questions from homeschooling parents let me know so i can scroll back through and, and grab those okay here we go from rico king my son elias hi elias how are you i'm so glad that you're on here today oops where'd that go here we go 
Um, started pepper seeds yesterday. Will we need to use special lighting for pepper for hot peppers indoors, or can I use window sunlight? I'm using Jiffy pellets and a heat mat in California. Okay, wonderful. I am so glad, Elias, that you are starting pepper seeds. You are going to absolutely love your homegrown peppers, and they're so colorful. It's going to be so much fun to see them sprout. Um, I love to use grow lights just because it's going to help them get off to a really good start and help your seedlings not get leggy. So if you're not familiar with legginess, it's when your seedlings have to stretch for the light and then the stems get tall and kind of spindly. They're not always the strongest stems in the world. Um, and when you have a, a, a grow light directly overhead, it really, really does help. Now in a pinch, you can definitely use a sunny windowsill. I know a lot of people might have trouble getting their hands on grow light supplies, but I do have a video on how to set up super easy grow lights. If you have one of those clamp lights um, that you might have in your garage, that's a, the easiest way to get one set up. And you can go back and watch my grow light video. You will need a special light bulb though. You can't use the same light bulb that you would just screw into a lamp. You will need a special light bulb, but in that grow light video, um, there's links um, in that video of where you can get those lights that you need. You might even be able to find them at your local hardware store if you're able to get out to a hardware store. So great job getting those peppers started, Elias. I'm so proud of you and I want you to come back and let me know um, how it goes. But definitely the heat mat is a great idea. They really do need that bottom heat to germinate um, quickly. Pepper seed, hot peppers will take a little bit longer to germinate though. So hang in there and just be patient. Okay, Jack. Hi, Jack. If my seedlings get burnt from the sun, will it kill them? Asking for a friend. Okay, um, you know, it really depends on how damaged they are. Of course, you want to make sure that you transition them gradually to the outdoors, as I'm sure you well know, Jack, and maybe you can help your friend with that or have um, him or her go back and watch your video on that. So tra transition them very slowly to the outdoors. And then if they do get damaged, um, you might want to pinch off the damaged leaf. But um, just keep on going with it. And of course, always have your backups just in case something does happen. Because you know what? Mistakes happen and gardening happens, life happens. If things die, you always want to have um, backups. John Ravarati has a good question about rotating crops. Okay, great. Thanks, Johnny. Hi, Should tuning in from be... work. Should we be rotating crops? Been hearing a lot about it, but I've never done it. You know what, Johnny, I've heard a lot about that too, and I don't necessarily always have the space to do that. So I'd say if you have the space and you're able to rotate your crops, and for those of you that don't know what that means, it means that if you planted tomatoes in one spot one year, you'd wanna um, rotate and uh, move your tomatoes to another spot in your garden, um, just so the soil isn't as depleted. Um, and it really helps that soil regenerate. Sometimes it will help um, with pest and um, disease control. So Cliff actually might have some more experience on that with his large piece of property. Um, I personally don't do it because I just don't really have the space for it. So Cliff, if you can shed some insight on that, that would be great as well. And Caitlin Mundy has a great question on growing watermelon in a pot. Caitlin, absolutely anything that you can grow in the ground can be grown in a container as long as the container is the right size. For example, right behind me here, I have a five gallon pot. I would not recommend growing a watermelon in a five gallon pot. You could do it if it's a smaller, compact size of watermelon, like the sugar baby watermelon. However, it's just not going to have the space it needs to grow as productive, to have as many watermelons as you would like to have. Um, and go back and watch my Growing Large Vegetables in Containers series for more information on growing watermelon in containers. But I would probably recommend a 15 or a 20 gallon container for a watermelon. You could trellis it. Um, you could put a little DIY uh, cage. I show you on my ch channel how to make a lot of different um, DIY trellises and grow it up. And then that way you can maximize your growing space. But yeah, you can grow anything in containers that you can grow in the ground as long as your container is the right size. So definitely um, you might wanna do a little bit more research on that, but yes, you can. Okay, Cliff is giving a great comment here about um, rotating crops. Thank you so much, Cliff, for that. Rotating crops is more important for large farmers. They cannot fertilize like we do. And yeah, great point, Cliff. Actually meant to mention that. If you're not able to rotate your crops, you definitely do want to amend your soil every time you plant. And what that means is you want to put new nutrients into your soil, such as compost, 
such as worm castings, um, worm, uh, uh, worm tea, when you plant your vegetables, you can water with worm tea. Uh, Vermister worm tea and worm castings are a great product to use in your garden. And adding organic fertilizer, so you definitely will need to add in those organic soil amendments each time you plant to keep your crops going. So thanks a lot, Cliff. Okay, Agor, do you know if good dirt is organic? It absolutely is. It's the best organic potting mix and soil, um, soil, or garden soil that you can add to your garden mix. So definitely head over to their website, check out gooddirt.com. Is it Jerry? Good-dirt.com. Um, it's it'll be all in the video description, and you can also purchase it now at Target. They do have smaller bags available at Target of the potting mix. I'm not sure if they have the soil conditioner available at Target, but the potting mix you would use, you can use in any of your containers. The soil conditioner is a great soil amendment that you can add directly to your garden beds or your raised beds. So yeah, it's organic and the best stuff out there. Okay, Karen, can you put at least two watermelon plants in a 15 or 20 gallon container? And yes, you can, Karen. Um, go back and watch, just search watermelon on my YouTube channel and I'll show you exactly how to do that. I've grown probably three, as long as they're a smaller size watermelon. The Sugar Baby is what I have in my watermelon seed collection and that works very, very well in containers. Okay, so let me talk about my third tip for brand new vegetable gardeners. And this one is probably a pretty common mistake that new gardeners make. And third tip is position your garden so it gets the most sunlight possible. So what you wanna do if you're in the Northern Hemisphere is you wanna face your garden beds. You wanna orient, orient them from north to south. So they're facing south so they get the most sunlight possible. And orient it so that your taller vegetables or vegetables that you might be trellising, like your cucumbers, your watermelon that you might be growing in containers, or your tomatoes are on the north side of your garden. So they're not shading out the shorter plants. So for example, I would put my watermelon or my tomatoes right back here, because this is the north side of my garden, and maybe a smaller type of vegetable, like a maybe some lettuce or arugula in a container, or a squash that might not be trellised and grow up tall, like a, a bush squash, I would plant them in front of the um, taller plants. So that way, if you, if you plant your tomatoes in the front or on the south side, then they're gonna be shading out anything that's behind them. So that is for the Northern Hemisphere. I know that we do have a lot of people that watch that live in the Southern Hemisphere. And in that case, you just flip flop it. So you plant your, you orient your garden beds from the North or from the South to the North so that your sun, your, your garden beds get the Northern sun um, in the Southern Hemisphere. So I explain that all in my book as well. You can go and look at um, where to place your garden for planting in that chapter. And we also did a video a couple weeks ago on how um, to pick a spot to plant your garden to um, figure out like where the sunlight is, where the shadows are gonna fall. So go back and check out that video because you definitely wanna pick the sunniest spot in your garden that gets at least six hours a day so you get the maximum production out of your vegetables. So um, that's just a little tip um, for you brand new gardeners. And I wanna hear from you experienced gardeners now in the chat, some tips and tricks that you have to offer the new gardeners. We wanna encourage everyone to grow as many vegetables as we possibly can and really help each other out and be a good support to each other um, as we move forward through this um, time in our world. Okay, Catherine Little Bear, can you plant beans in the north now in Washington? Okay, Catherine, it really depends on the, the temperatures there. Beans are a warm weather vegetable. So rather than me um, saying, okay, here's what you can plant in which particular area of the country, what I want you guys to do when I'm trying to teach you is the general principles for growing warm weather vegetables versus cool weather vegetables. So since it's a warm weather vegetable, it means you need to plant it after your last frost date if you're planting it directly in your garden beds. Um, so it depends on the temperature where you live. In California, I already have some beans planted, but it is still getting pretty chilly in the nights. It's in in the 40s at night so they're growing pretty slow um, they have sprouted but they're not you know growing as fast as it will once the temperature heats up and i know nisha just asked a question um, in the chat ahead of time ahead of the live stream that her beans have not sprouted yet and it's probably because the temperatures are still pretty cold at night they're just going to grow slower they're going to thrive once the temperatures get warmer so um you know go for it if it's if you're not going to get a frost yet this year but if you're still getting a frost i would definitely hold out hold off 
Okay. Um, all right. Here's a good question from Susha uh, Gachi. Can you suggest the easiest crop for colder climate around USDA zone six? Uh, the, the chat's scrolling by so fast, I'm losing some of the comments. Sorry, guys. I'm a newbie and I don't have a garden, so can I grow on a balcony? Okay, first of all, I'm so excited that you're here. I'm so excited that you're growing and are growing on a balcony. Absolutely, you can grow on a balcony. And like I mentioned at the beginning of the live stream, go watch our small space garden series for everything you need to know about growing on a balcony. But what I would do is um, start with cool weather vegetables. And as soon as, um, even a few weeks before your last frost it you can plant peas I've got some peas growing right back here on a trellis and as soon as your ground thaws a little bit poke those little pea seeds into the ground and our, our video on uh, we have lots of videos on peas when we did a few weeks ago on three easy vegetables to grow you can go ahead and plant peas and lettuce and I show how to do it on that video so yeah you can definitely get started those are very quick growing vegetables and you can harvest them in about six to eight weeks and you're gonna absolutely love growing them Okay, great comment here from Luz. Plant things that give you a big bang for your buck. Zucchini, beans, lettuce, and squashes. Absolutely. Those are big producers. You can grow a lot of veggies, a lot of veggies in a little bit of space. Squash does take up a little bit more space, but you can still grow it in a container. You can actually trellis it as well. I've grown it before um, up through tomato cages just to save on space. And um, that way they're not sprawled all over your patio or your balcony or whatever you're growing on. Okay, let's see here. Um, couple other questions. Northern hemisphere facing south. Yes, thank you Cliff for clarifying that. Facing, facing south, tall veggies on the north side. And zucchinis give a massive amount for plant, per plant. Absolutely, there's so many different things you can do with zucchini too. I'm so excited for our zucchini season to be here. Zucchini boats, zucchini bread, we love to just grill it um, outside in the summertime. Um, there's so much you can make with it and I would love to hear some of your ideas as well. Uh, here we are, someone watching from Australia. Welcome to G-Man 73. So glad you are here and um, watching from all over the world. I'm just reading back through the chat here. Okay, great comment from Laura. If you are starting, plant extra. Absolutely, Laura. Woman after my own heart there. I always say plant backups just in case things happen. And in fact, guys, don't get discouraged because challenges, challenging times um, do happen when you're gardening. So don't try not to get super heartbroken if one of your plants dies. We have all had that experience. I know how disappointing it is, but it happens and that is the best way to learn. Get out there, experiment, and just plant extras because things will happen. And sometimes if you expect things to happen, then you won't be so discouraged and disappointed when you do have um, setbacks. Okay, here's a comment from Ace Elliott. I'm in a one bedroom apartment. I'm growing three kinds of peppers, sweet potatoes, and some herbs. Just like you said, make sure everything is facing the sun. Okay, that is wonderful. I love how you're making it work with what you have. One bedroom apartment with a sunny window. So um, yeah, just keep it going there and work with what you got, guys. If you don't have the funds or the ability to get grow lights, then put it in a Sunday windowsill and make it happen. You can do it. And what I wanted to mention at the beginning and I forgot is that, and I talk about this in my book, is that I don't believe there's any such thing as a brown thumb. Now I have people who say I can't grow anything to save my life. I have a brown thumb and I don't go for that. I think anyone can grow their own organic veggies. That's exactly why I wrote my book called Organic Gardening for Everyone. Because once you get started with a small little container like the one right behind me, you realize that you can do it. You start simple, you get hooked on that beautiful, um, just seeing it sprout and tasting the beautiful harvest and then you wanna to expand to more. So great job working with what you got. Okay, Amy has a question about fig tree in a pot. Any suggestions? Uh, the fig, your fig tree is not giving fruit. And I have never grown figs before. That is one thing I would love to do. So if any of you fig tree growers are out there, please give Amy some suggestions on what she can do to help her fig tree produce. Okay, um, germination from Shweta. Which seeds do not need to be on heat mats? Okay. Um, Shweta, I pretty much just use heat mats for my warm weather vegetables, particularly eggplants and peppers really do need a heat mat. 
those are the only ones that I consistently grow on heat mats. You really do not need them at all. In fact, don't use a heat mat for any cool weather vegetables. It's gonna make them way too hot and um, they're not gonna grow well for you. Um, occasionally I will use a heat mat for tomatoes and cucumbers just to get them off to a really fast start. But other than tomatoes and, or other than um, peppers and eggplant, everything else is really fine without a heat mat. Okay, question here from uh, Manya Marquez. I would like to add flowers to our garden. Which ones grow best in South Florida heat? Okay, I know you guys are probably already getting a lot of heat down there. Um, you can take a look on my website, CaliKimGardenHome.com. I have a seed collection called Bring on the Pollinators. It has warm weather. I have a warm weather pollinators and a cool weather pollinators flower collection. The warm weather ones, those will grow very well in the heat. It has flowers like um, Cosmos, Borage, which is a flower, but also an herb. It has a wildflower mix. Um, oh, there's a couple of other ones in there. Oh, zinnias grow very well in hot weather. Of course, sunflowers love the heat. So um, go on there, take a look at that collection and you give you some good ideas. And also, again, do your own research. Google what flowers grow well in my area. Talk to other gardeners in your area to see what they have luck with. And also join in um, like our Facebook group, um, Gardening Coast to Coast. You can join that over on Facebook and where you can connect with other gardeners in your area to get ideas and suggestions and support and to see what things grow well that other gardeners have had success with in your area as well. So be a, get a, uh, join a, some type of garden community and get support from other gardeners as well. Okay, we'll take a couple more questions before we sign off for the day. This has been great, you guys. The chat is just flying by, and I love how so many people are helping each other out. It's really, really great to see. Okay, here's a question from Andrea. I know Andrea watches all the way from Denmark. Thank you so much, Andrea. Uh, and her question is, anyone feel free to answer. I just put in a trailer load of aged composted horse manure into my garden today. Do I need to let it sit a while before direct sowing seeds? Now, I have never used horse manure in my garden, so I'm looking to you guys out there in the garden community to help her answer her question. Um, I know that you do need to let it age, be very well aged manure, or it gets too hot for your plants. It can burn your seedlings, but I'd love to hear those of you that have actual experience with that to help Andrea answer her question. Okay, let's see. Sunflowers. Yes, Nicole. Thank you. Sunflowers are so easy in warm weather. And Rod watching from Baja. Almost 400 people today. Thank you so much, Rod, for pointing that out. I appreciate all of you oh, here you. growing veggies. Um, let's see. Question from All Star Chuck. How to protect newly planted seedlings from rain? And this is a question from Brissa. Um, you know what? What you could do, I try and hold off just a little bit if I know there's going to be a heavy, heavy rain before I plant brand new seedlings. But what you could do is either um, pop a little like a plastic tub over them to help protect them. Um, if I, if I have an area that's brand newly seeded that I don't want all the seeds to wash away, sometimes I'll cover it with a tarp. But you do need to be careful if the sun comes out to make sure that you take off that covering um, like the tarp or the little tub so that your seedlings don't fry if it gets a little bit warmer. So give that a try. But again, always have some backups going um, just in case. Okay, so guys, we are going to go ahead and sign off for the day and... Look who came in to say hello and goodbye. Hey everyone, good to see you all. Thanks everyone for the super incredible energy here today. We love you guys all over the world. This is just completely awesome, especially just during this time in the world of what's going on. So thanks you guys, you guys all rock. Yeah, thanks you guys. I wanna encourage you to just keep on growing those veggies, keep on planting. Are we gonna live stream on Wednesday? Another fireside? Do we have anything well, else? Well, let's play it by ear. I think a Friday might be better. Okay, okay. I don't know. We'll see what you guys think. Yeah, we, in case you missed the last um, fireside chat, we did one. Uh, we've done a couple of them. We'd like to do another one. We're just kind of trying to land on the day that'll work the best. So make sure that you pay attention to my Instagram, CaliKim29, because mm -hmm. I will announce it on there, or my Facebook, CaliKim. And we'll put a link, and um, that way you guys, it's just more of a casual live stream where we hang out check in, kind of see how everyone's doing and how everyone's week is going. Yep. So great to have all the newbie gardeners on here today and really appreciate all the old timers or experienced <laughs> gardeners, sorry, not old timers, who are along and giving support in the chat as well. 
So all right, guys, we're gonna sign off for today. Hope you guys have a great week and we'll see you on the next live stream. All right, guys, bye-bye. Bye, guys.